Hello and welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the amazing actor from Las Vegas, my co-host. Yes, my my very own co-host, so I'm so proud of him, Paul Vato. Hey, Paul. Hi, AJ. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for uh, today's show, especially uh, getting to meet uh, Jeff here, and uh, I'm so looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it all week, so thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you. It's always a pleasure to work with you, Paul. And you're right, we've got a phenomenal special VIP in the building. Um, we have Jeff Gomez. Let me introduce him first before we give a nice greeting to him. He is a producer, writer, and director. He's also the CEO of Starlight Runner Entertainment. Isn't that fabulous? And we want to give him a super warm welcome. Hey, Jeff, so glad you're here tonight. Oh. Thank you, uh, AJ, and thank you, uh, Paul. It's, it's uh, wonderful to be here. It's so great that you're here. We're so excited to have you. And, um, you know, you're a special VIP. So first of all, I want to say a very special shout out and thank you to Ms. Yvette Vargas. Thank you, Yvette, for introducing Jeff to us. Um, you interviewed him on New Hollywood on Clubhouse, and here he is now. He's a wonderful guy, and you're such a great referral. So thank you, Yvette Vargas, for casting this show. Okay, let's get Yvette right. That is fantastic. I, I, I love Yvette. Um, uh, she's uh, connected me with such wonderful people, and uh, she's a great filmmaker herself. Uh, you also had a recent guest, Lisa Lindo, um, uh, on, and uh, uh, she was once she was my agent, my very first uh, uh, agent in Hollywood. Uh, so, uh, Lisa, a shout out to Lisa as well. Wow. Shout out to Lisa Linda. Oh, my gosh. She was your first agent? She was my first serious uh, uh, Hollywood movie agent. Yes. Incredible. How did you guys meet? Uh, <laughs> um, Lisa has a very uh, strong presence, as you well know. And um, uh, in um, at the Sundance Film Festival... Uh, where I was uh, showcasing a, a film I directed, uh, she she wore this gigantic marshmallow Cossack hat, <laughs> which you could never miss her. And I would say, who's that to, to my producers? And they'd say, oh, that's Lisa Lindo. You want to be friends with her. And, um, and sure enough, um, uh, we connected and um, she represented me. She, she got me some good deals early on. This is amazing. And we love Lisa so much. She is one of the best parts. She's your friend and mine. And she's so super. And, and I love her beautiful energy and her personality. And um, she's also welcomed me in as a friend. And I just adore her. Don't we, Paul? I'm such a fan of, of Lisa Lindo. Yeah, of course. Oh, and we had a go. great interview with her. So Let's that's our, our, our first lesson of the day. Align yourself with powerful women, yeah. right? Yvette and Lisa, um, you know, uh, they, they've done nothing but wonderful things uh, uh, for me and with me. Yes, I agree. And you can't do any better than that. They're like some of the top way up there. Um, and, and we just think so much, we respect them so much. And they're so multi-talented and, and such beautiful hearts. You know, that's what it's Absolutely. all about. Yeah, exactly. so align yourself. So I love that lesson, Jeff. We're we're off to a great start here. I wanted to jump in and talk about um, now in on Wiki, your Wikipedia page. It says <laughs> not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. It says you're a writer and transmedia producer in fantasy, science fiction, and young adult genres. Now, um, you worked as a writer, is this right, at Palladium, Palladium oh, Books? My gosh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> um, uh, Palladium was, uh, was my first job in uh, uh, adventure games. 
Um, uh, so, so that was a, a publisher of games and, um, uh, I had been writing uh, about games, um, in uh, a magazine that I published gateways magazine, uh, way back in the eighties. And, um, the, the, the take that we had on games is that it was kind of this emerging art form and, um, and that creating games and telling stories with games. Um, was a, a new and wonderful thing that that um, that invoked a new kind of of storytelling, participative storytelling, and um, uh, we we'd write about this, and um, and then the game companies started to say, well, put your money where your mouth is, <laughs> you know, come come write some games. So Palladium was uh, uh, the one of the first companies that I wrote uh, games with. Amazing, amazing. Now, you had various roles within Palladium. You were also an editor, is that right? Uh, sure. Well, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, from the old school turn of the century, know how to proofread, know how to edit <laughs> uh, uh, skill set. Um, so uh, those books, uh, the game books are complex and long and um, uh, sometimes people who write them are not the best spellers and <laughs> uh, writers even. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I would edit them and, uh, and I wrote a few as well. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Now um, we've got, I want to jump into these two great posters that we have on screen. We've got world race greatest challenge. <laughs> and then we have, Shin Ultraman. So could you tell us about the first one, World Race, World Race oh Greatest Challenge? And it's a DVD, right? Sure, sure. Um, you're, you're kind of looking at um, uh, bookends. <laughs> um, you know, um, uh, after um, uh, Palladium, I, I got into uh, comic book publishing uh, and I wrote and edited comic books. And um, uh, that uh, publisher was, was purchased Valiant? by a, what's was that? that? Valiant, that? that's right, yeah. Valiant yeah. Comics, and it was purchased by a video game company called Acclaim Entertainment, and so I um, I, I got to use my uh, game development skills for with a, a new medium, uh, video games, and um, uh, and I did really well with that. Uh, I got involved with um, the Nintendo 64 platform and I got involved with Magic the Gathering, the, the trading card game, and, and uh, used my uh, Dungeons and Dragons experience to, uh, to help them build a world for Magic the Gathering. And, and this kind of launched my career mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, allowed me to start dabbling in film and that's where I got to the Sundance and, um, and then uh, Los Angeles because my movie did well. And, um, uh, and uh, I, I got into the entertainment business and started my company, Starlight Runner, in 2000. Our first client was Mattel. Uh, and they said, hey, Magic Boy, come here and look at these cars. <laughs> what can we do with these you know, die-cast metal cars? And I said, let's have a race. Let's, ha let's have a race around the world, like old speed racer cartoons. Love <laughs> and, it. Um, and I said, and, and we can do the uh, animation very, very inexpensively because this was not planned by you. This is my idea. Um, and knowing how video game assets worked allowed me to uh, uh, talk to the animation company and build the story world of, of the Hot Wheels universe. Uh, very inexpensively using their established digital assets. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and so we did um, uh, several uh, episodes, a mini series of Hot Wheels World Race. Wow. And what you're looking at there is the greatest challenge. Uh, that was, I think, chapter three uh, of, of the, um, of the DVDs. They were, there were a series. And uh, 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 that one's special to me. Uh, AJ, because um, uh, that's Banji Castillo on the cover. Um, he's a, a Puerto Rican cartoon character. Oh, I um, love it. That that was very unusual in 2002, 2003 when that came out. 
Um, uh, in fact, the cast of that uh, animated series was diverse. There was um, uh, a Muslim character. There was a Japanese uh, kid, um, uh, a Puerto Rican. You know, like it was it was really multinational. And it was special to me because this was just after 9-11. Um, and I wanted to tell a story with Mattel for the entire world about how we need to combine our, our uh, different uh, sensibilities, backgrounds, and skills yeah. in order to overcome the overwhelming odds. Oh, and I that's the that. story of, of World Race. I love this so much. Um, and he's so handsome, You're, the character that you have on the front. <laughs> Isn't he, Paul? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this is like just so so right up my alley. <laughs> AJ. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I mean, everything with with the gaming, the uh, um, I mean, I'm working on a project right now, and all I can think of is like, oh my god, no wonder, no wonder we connected. <laughs> and because it's kind of like in the world of Magic: The Gathering, so I oh, would there you go. If that still is something that's viable, or was this something that you know happened in 2000 and it's no longer. You know, but like, imagine like a movie based on Magic the Gathering, which I think they've tried, but ne has never happened. So yeah, I don't an, know why. There's an animated series in development right now. Okay, okay. But one of the reasons why, and, and this is my, my little soapbox, um, is that um, uh, if you don't concentrate on your story world, if you don't develop it um, and fully realize it right at the beginning, then it's really hard to um, extend your intellectual property across different media platforms. I'm a transmedia storyteller. So that, that, that trans doesn't happen without a, a richly developed universe. And, um, and so Hot Wheels, that, that world race was richly developed and allowed M Mattel to play with those characters for like 10 years um, uh, before they were done with them. Um, Magic the Gathering, I built that world at the beginning, but then, you know, they kind of left it behind for a while and, and didn't want to, to pay too much attention to it. Um, and, uh, and then had a hard time uh, extending Magic uh, onto other media. Now I think they have really great uh, uh, story developers at Wizards of the Coast, at Hasbro. And, um, and so there's some good stuff coming in the animated um, series. Um, amazing, amazing. I, I wonder if there's room in that world for, for a second one that's not magic, but it's very similar, or, or if, 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 if there's just room for one in the world. Oh, I, I think there's room for all kinds of things. Uh, you know, well, you, you, it's, it's what you have to say. So that's what you have to concentrate on. And I talk to, to a lot of writers about this because they, they come up with a high concept that's just a little bit different from, you know, something that's established out there. And, um, and, and I tell people that's okay. So long as what you have to say is distinctly coming from who you are, what your experience mm -hmm. is and what you have to contribute to the conversation. I love it. That is such great advice uh, for all of our listeners and people that are thinking about uh, getting into this this world now. May, may I ask you about about your background? Because I mean, you know, you mentioned that there was this Puerto Rican driver in in um, in your project, uh, and your last name is Gomez uh, with a Z. So I'm thinking, uh, I, 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 and you're on the East Coast, I, I, I guess, right? Uh, I'm a Puerto Rican from the Lower East Side of Manhattan. <laughs> All right, I was, I, I think I was probably dead nuts on. I was like, yeah, I think so, Boricua. Yeah, so exactly. Wonderful, exactly. wonderful. Um, uh, uh, yeah, my, my dad uh, came from Puerto Rico. He was a, an immigrant and um, with his family and um, and we had it rough. You know, it was uh, uh, it was not easy for Puerto Ricans in the early 1960s. And um, uh, eventually he went back to Puerto Rico, but I persisted. And for a while, I, I was kind of alienated from my heritage, but um, uh, when it came time to put my name on products, you know, um, uh, comic books and video games and, you know, producer credits, um, I said, you know what, 
put that accent over the O, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and it's cool because now kids can look at, at my name and, and think, wow, a Puerto Rican can make comic books and video games and fantasy shows and things like that. And I, I, I really enjoy um, uh, trying to fire up uh, young people and get them to, uh, to be creative. That's amazing. What, what a great story. Uh, AJ, may I ask another question? Of course. <laughs> of course. <go> right ahead, <laughs> because I, I, like I said, this is right, so, so right up my alley with, yes, with the, of course, you know, the, the <laughs> video games and the gaming, but then like Ultraman. Now, is that the same Ultraman that we grew up with in, well, I, I probably shouldn't date myself, but uh, you know, in the seventies and eighties. That's uh, right. Okay. Okay. Right. I'd love, I'd love to hear more about that. And, <laughs> if that's okay with AJ. AJ, you have uh, spoken with others. I'm a fan of the show. Uh, as um, about um, essentially self-actualization. How do these people, you know, when you're, when you're making movies or, or streaming series or anything like that, a video game, that's an enormous task. It can cost tens or hundreds of millions of dollars um, uh, there are many, many people involved, and, um, and and so you have to imagine somehow that you can do this <laughs> and accomplish it. And 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 some of that takes a lot of understanding about how things work, and some of it takes some boldness and and fierce passion, as uh, my people say, passion. You have to be fiery about getting the job done. So um, uh, I've learned early on that it is actually kind of important to call your shots. Uh, in, in other words, here's what I want to do. You know, I, I've done this, this, and this, and here's what I want to do next. So I, I love those, um, uh, you know, those Japanese um, uh, superhero shows. When, when I was a kid, man, I, I, I love them. The reason is because um, they were serious and they took me seriously as a um, as a viewer, as a kid, you know, um, uh, you know, the 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 struggles were sometimes life and death. The 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 serial the storylines were serial, you know, like um, uh, characters remembered what happened <laughs> in the previous episodes that didn't happen in American, you know, cartoons and TV shows. Yes. Um, Right. So so um, I loved the, the Japanese sense of drama and storytelling and um, and L Ultraman was one of those first loves. You know, when you're a little kid, you're seeing this giant silver dude. There you are, um, you know, fighting giant monsters and, you know, um, helping uh, humanity to kind of rise up to the challenge of being a member of the universe. <laughs> um, so I would say in a lot of my talks and speeches, oh, you know, I'd love to work with the Japanese on a project like Ultraman, <laughs> you know, and one day somebody heard me. Um, uh, the licensing uh, uh, company that, um, that uh, received Ultraman recently because now they're trying to revive that property after a long absence. Um, he, he called me up and he said, hey, can you tell me, this is Danny Simon at the licensing group in Los Angeles. What is he? What, <laughs> is that a, a suit, a scuba suit he's wearing? Does Ultraman eat? <laughs> what, what, what's going on? And I said, let me, let me count the ways. And uh, before I knew it, he packed me onto a plane and flew me to Tokyo, and um, and I became the creative producer of Ultraman Connection and all things uh, Ultraman uh, on the international front. So our, our job is to revive Ultraman. And, um, and I have a lot of friends uh, now in Hollywood and at places like Marvel Comics. Wow. And so I, I got... Um, uh, C.B. Sabalski, the editor-in-chief of Marvel, to pick up Ultraman as a comic book series. And once that happened, all the other licensees are like, wait a minute, what's with this? What's, what's <laughs> Ultraman? What's happening? And then Netflix uh, did a super duper deal with us uh, to do uh, a Japanese anime series. 
which is on right now. Third season is this spring. Uh, and a, um, a feature, an animated feature, a big one, um, uh, directed by Shannon Tyndall um, uh, by Industrial Light and Magic. So this is ILM, wow. the special effects company, making the show, not Lucasfilm Animation. But the people who make Star Wars are wow. making uh, uh, Ultraman animated for Netflix. It's going to be awesome. Uh, oh really, God. really delightful. So Shin Ultraman is the latest feature that was released in Tokyo. It won three Academy Awards in, in Japan two nights ago. And um, uh, it uh, it did gangbusters there. And, um, and uh, my company bought it to uh, America. So Shin Ultraman was the number five movie in the top 10 in January uh, when it uh, it came out on in limited theatrical release uh, here in the United States through Fathom Events. Incredible. Congratulations, Jeff. We're so proud of you. And this is phenomenal. You know, both of the posters are gorgeous. They're really great looking oh. uh, posters and Industrial, who has not heard of industrial light and magic? Oh my gosh. Oh, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And so you must be thrilled with that. How do you feel about that, Jeff? Um, you know, I, I, I often, of course, because of my love for these characters, I think about my childhood. And um, in, the, in the 1970s, uh, you know, uh, Paul, you can you can chime in. It was a little lonely if you were a nerd. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, now that I was a nerd. I oh mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, you know. And you mentioned Speed Racer uh, uh, earlier. As a matter of fact, uh, this game that I play that's like Magic. One of my alter egos is uh, Racer Max. So. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, loved all that. But I remember waiting for U U Ultraman and, you know, all those, you know, Japanese 70s shows. Oh, my God. Yeah, I guess I am. An, I was. Sure. And I, well, I'm so so I, I, I think about the fact that, you know, it was very lonely um, uh, and sometimes sad uh, uh, to be so isolated and to love something so much that nobody else understood or or a lot of people thought it was silly or stupid and um uh and and now uh i get to go to lincoln center you know uh with people dressed up in suits uh uh coming to to watch the uh, american premiere of shin ultraman you, you know yeah. It's it's just uh, you know it's it's breathtaking. It, it's a dream come true, and uh, and I get to 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 be a part of that somehow, and and that's um, it, it really does feel wonderful, uh, AJ. Well, well th th thank you, dear leader uh, of our of of our nerd dumb. Thank <laughs> you for for representing us and and bringing us to to the forefront. I mean, because yeah, I, I can't I can't imagine that you know back then as a kid, and you're right, just like. Like you, you try to find other people that are like you, and there are not many people like you that enjoy that would enjoy those shows. Uh, yeah, so thank you for for keeping that that alive. Oh, you're you're certainly welcome, and and um, you know it it um, the 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 recurring kind of theme uh, in in uh, accomplishing things like that is you know continually trying to imagine that there are bars in front of me you know i'm in some kind of imaginary cage all of us are you know and um uh and and i think to myself all right what's out there will i get what i want out there and if that's the case how do i get out of this thing <laughs> And um, and and educating myself, figuring out how things work, and um, and then taking some kind of action somehow allows me to slip through the bars or find a trap door or something like that, and I'm in a new room, 
it's a new space and it allows me to do these incredible new things. So much fun, you know, um, that put me on the set of Avatar with uh, James Cameron and John Landau and Sigourney Weaver and Zoe Saldana um, uh, and um, helping them uh, to document the universe of Pandora, you, you know, um, and and that was I couldn't have even imagined that such a thing would be possible being on that set. Oh my gosh, it must have been absolutely incredible, Jeff. Um, uh, the, it was the Battle of Home Tree was one of the scenes I was actually standing in the middle of. I didn't have the ping pong balls, so you couldn't see me, but I was, <laughs> I was there, you know, um, and, um, and it was just uh, uh, breathtaking. You, know? you were in your element uh, because you were surrounded by incredible talent as well. So everybody lifting each other up and supporting each other. It must have been such a creative, wonderful environment. Um, and so, AJ, and so I'll, I'll tell you how I got that job. How did you? Um, yeah. the, the short version of the story is um, 20th Century Fox uh, uh, bought me in because James Cameron would not talk to them. <laughs> they, they were at odds because Avatar was becoming very, very expensive. Um, the, some of the uh, uh, executives at Fox were not b big believers, and um, and he wouldn't he stopped talking to them. So they said, you know, Gomez put Starlight Runner in between, you know, Lightstorm and 20th Century Fox, so that we can communicate and most effectively market um, Avatar, a and uh, and also help uh, uh, Jim with the. Um, the development of the story world, the mythology of, of uh, Pandora. And um, and so I said, wow, um, so do I have the job? And they said, oh, no, uh, Jim has to hire you. <laughs> Jim has to say yes. Um, uh, so I, I we went to Lightstorm and they uh, uh, they sat us in a little movie theater there to show us uh, some uh, footage of the uh, that they had shot already. And, and one of them was of Neytiri, um, uh, Zoe Saldana's character. Um, and her, uh, she just kind of rose into camera, rose into screen, and she was in the jungle and the sunlight uh, passed through her ear, meaning you could see the veins, like it, it lit up from behind her ear. Um, and, and I knew instinctively that I was looking at something that I'd never seen before. You know, that level of detail, that level of, of effort that he put into that little ear, um, uh, it, it made me cry. Um, and, and Cameron came in and saw that. And he said, all right, come to my office. And uh, we got the job. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for being the, uh, if you will, liaison to bring that uh, and the facilitator to bring everybody together, Jeff. We appreciate because of you, um, the talks resumed. What do you say? What do you think, Paul? Isn't that phenomenal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what what an, uh, what an amazing story. But, I, you know, it just shows that if you have a passion for something, people will, will recognize that and, and see that. So that that's amazing, and congratulations, and, and thank oh, you for sharing that story. I think sure, it's sure. I think it's inspirational. I think it's motivational for all of us that are that are in the world of entertainment, and and for those people, more importantly, I think for those people that are looking to get into entertainment or different aspects of entertainment, it's not just acting. You know, there's that's just right. so much more, and you know that acting in front of those blue screens and with the balls and all that, it's it's got it's harder than. You know, because I'm not playing off of somebody else type of a thing. I just did a, a an animated. Well, it's half at half live, half animated. I was uh, blessed enough to be cast in in, uh, in Ted, which is a prequel to the movies Ted, Seth MacFarlane's Ted, and it's animated. And you, uh, you see them playing off of a non-existent bear that's going to be put in later on. You mm -hmm. know, so it's it's not easy to uh, to do that, but it's it's amazing. I think. Uh, it, it, it's wonderful. So thank you for sharing your sure. it's a very traditional story. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. This is incredible. I'm I'm enjoying this so so much, and I just want to thank you for being such an integral part, Jeff, of 
the the executive behind the scenes that is um, bringing, like I said, bringing everyone together and your wonderful communication skills. We need you. You're so important that, you know, you're a VIP. And so thank you so much for your service in the entertainment industry. I guess I could say it that way, right? To, 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 help, uh -huh. to help bring solutions um, together. Um, I did want to ask you this. How did, how was it? Was it the, was it like a dream? You adapting your superheroes, uh, your superhero characters to games. Was it like a dream come true? Was that one of, you, one of your dreams that you wanted? You know, um, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, you know the um, the the reality of of that process is never easy. You know, uh, and uh, and to be honest, because of the way that I've always wanted to tell stories, which leveraged multiple media platforms, right? So you see how the Marvel Cinematic Universe works right now, or Star Wars right now, where there's a, a movie, and then the streaming shows tie into the movie, and the comic books are part of the continuity, and novels, and video games expand the universe and so forth and they're all kind of integrated into the same canon the same continuity that is a novel uh notion that that's not was not common in the 20th century that's that's new but it is all that i ever wanted from when i was a kid right i wanted my universes to make sense <laughs> and to be you know, cohesive and coherent and to to fit together um, uh, to allow for me to tell my stories, you know, as as a a participant, as a creator, um, uh, uh, but to have integrity uh, so that the the story world was more important even than, you know, the individual people who were uh, creating bits and pieces of that world, you, you know. Um, and look what Kevin Feige does now. He'll recast the damn role. If if you if you're not cutting it, somebody else is going to play Hulk. <laughs> you know? um, and, and look at Warner Brothers. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying for 15 years to get this DC universe to work and failing because they did not observe the primacy of the integrity of their characters and story world. So who did they get? James Gunn, who does respect that that primacy. Um, these are our um, approaches, methods that we pioneered with the Walt Disney Company in the early aughts and, and with uh, uh, companies like Microsoft and uh, Amy Pascal at Sony Pictures uh, let us uh, do a lot of work uh, on uh, Men in Black and Spider-Man. You know, uh, uh, Walter Parks uh, and Laura McDonald um, uh, let us work on Men in Black. You know, we uh, um, uh, Hasbro and Transformers was something we worked on. All of these things were in an effort to to develop story worlds that have integrity on a transmedia level. And now it's become an art form. Um, uh, uh, what I could have dreamed as a kid. Um, remember, um, wow, this participant of storytelling, it's an art. There's something to this. It's, it's weird and people sneer at it and everyone likes to put down the Marvel movies and all that sort of thing. But let me tell you something, it's historic. It's, it's fabulous and more are on the way. Um, you know, so, uh, so yeah, it's cool to, to watch dreams uh, come true. Yeah. Very hard, lots of no's, <laughs> lots of no's, uh, but I, I circumvent the no's by working really hard, mm -hmm. by saying, you know what, you're telling me no, but I'm going to do this off the side for nothing, and I'm going to show it to you, and if you like it, you'll hire me and, and we'll get the job done, and that, that works a lot, not always, but a lot. Beautiful. I love that philosophy, don't you, Paul? I love it. I, I absolutely do love that. I mean, it's it's that can do attitude. Uh, I mean, it's like writing a spec strip type of a thing where where I, I know you're going to I believe in it. So I'm not going to give up on it now. Just getting other people 
on board. It doesn't always work, but I, I think, you know, if you have a passion for a project, you, you can't just take that first no. And I mean, it's the same with acting. I mean, if I gave up on that first no, I mean, you just can't. Maybe it comes from my salesman background that the more no's you get, the better, because you know that a yes is coming up. So keep, but, keep going through it. But let me tell you something, Paul. You cannot do that if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and and uh, bless yeah. the young people. A lot of them don't understand. <laughs> Right. So, so, um, so the point I'd like to make uh, with you, AJ, is, is uh, that our audience needs to understand that training is vital. Um, I trained and rehearsed and trained all my life and still do, you know, with new technologies and new uh, uh, approaches and new storytelling techniques. Um, it, it, um, you, you've got to know how it works before you sit down and write that script. I mean, you can scribble it down, but then you've got to go teach yourself how to fix it. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. So then you cannot take no for an answer. <laughs> that, th 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 that is very true because I think, you know, people are used to hearing the fake it till you make it. And to a certain extent, maybe yes, but you, you're a hundred percent right in that you need the training. Uh, yeah. And once you think you've learned it all, it's just the beginning. I mean, it's yeah. I, to me, it's kind of like, martial arts you know or getting that black belt you know you're like oh man all i want is that black belt once i'm a black belt and then you realize that actually when you get your black belt that's the beginning of your training you're just starting now you're starting to learn your that particular yeah. martial arts so the it's, black belt like only means that way. your your white belt is dirty <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, all. that's all yes and speaking of technology i wanted to ask your opinion of AI, artificial intelligence, where is media going? How is it changing? What do you think, Jeff? Well, now, AJ, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can, we can. Bingo. Uh, go ahead. No, 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 I'm glad to answer. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not an easy answer to take. Um, uh, artificial intelligence is here, right? Yeah. Um, I, I remember uh, uh, when um, uh, I put a Mac Plus on my desk, you know, and um, and and I I loved uh, print and and uh, the, the the medium of print and and putting newspapers and books together, and um, and I knew right there that that whole industry was about to completely transform, and a lot of people were going to lose their jobs, and you know. And what are you going to do? This is it. We're, we're moving forward. Yeah. Photoshop. Photoshop's going to wipe out the artists. It's going to wipe out a whole industry and, and so forth. You know, um, uh, they, they come one at a time. <laughs> iPhones, you, you know. And, uh, and now here we are with something uh, that can generate incredible images, can generate film you know, some clever kids are already working on their animated features with their AI uh, software and, um, and, and even writing. So um, what's going to happen? We have to learn how to use that stuff. Yes. We just have to, you know, and, and do it fast because mm -hmm. if, if your job, you know, could theoretically involve it, somebody else is, is working on it. Um, you know, what is the best thing about AI? I think it's that it allows us to figure out how to ask better questions, you know, prompts and, and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, how do I articulate um, uh, what's in my mind? Mm -hmm. so this thing can help me. And, and then, you know, uh, I, I'm very particular. I don't know about other people. But I, I won't settle for what it generates. You know, I'm either going to rewrite it or send it to my art team to fix or, you know, mess with or have them use it to generate a million ideas and then figure out which we're going to go with and, and so forth. And human beings control all that, not uh, robots. It's a tool, isn't it, Jeff? Right? It's just a tool. It's just a tool. Yeah, so I love that. Uh, answer. Thank you so much for uh, answering that because it's a it's an interesting um, conversation and it's it's here and like you said. So I did want to switch up the subject subject a little bit. 
you are or have been a U.S. strategic advisor for the U.S. Department of State. Is that correct? <laughs> are we supposed to know that, AJ? Maybe we weren't supposed to know that. No, you, it's okay. Um, <laughs> look, um, uh, I realized early on the power of story. Um, story saved my life, right? Story got me out of the, the projects, um, you know, and then I began to watch the impact that my stories had on my audience, on, on kids. It, it, some of them were inspired and, and, you know, went to work for the gaming industry and, and, and so forth. I also uh, became aware that um, things like television shows could impart incredible lessons on entire societies, right? Um, uh, the Norman Lear comedies in the in the 70s were amazing because mm -hmm. they allowed us to to see uh, diverse people and and have discussions about controversial topics when nothing like that had been allowed before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it got people to open up and and start talking to each other because there was a little humor in it, right? Um, later on, um, I started to see telenovelas in other countries uh, uh, teach young women about the uh, power of education to, to allow for them to rise uh, above and, and liberate themselves. You know, this was in the 70s and 80s when South America and so forth, the, you know, the women's movement had not started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, uh, and um, and it was super potent, really, really effective. So I began to write uh, 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 ten or fifteen years ago about the power of story to um, uh, forward progressive, positive um, uh, innovations and evolutions to society, mm -hmm. and um, uh, to my complete shock, um, I got a call from, <laughs> you know, the United States government. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and they said, hey. You're hired. <laughs> uh, can, can you do for, you know, um, uh, a, a crisis situations in other countries? Can you, can you help us tell stories to get people to respond to crises better? Wow. And, um, and I said, well, if if you've got some money <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the true desire for those people to heal themselves, this is what I told them. I said, this is not about the State Department or the U.S. government or the U.S. military asserting um, uh, a narrative onto Mexico because we fear the the cartel violence is spilling over into the United States. This is not about um, uh, you know asserting our narrative on Colombia. Um, uh, Colombia needs to heal from the civil war, the terrible yeah. civil war that that it experienced all those years ago to this day. Um, you know, so um, it's about people remembering who they are. Um, what is their identity? What is their mythology? Um, even more so than religion, their mythology, their, their cultural mythology. What are the values there? What, what made them distinct as a civilization and wonderful and lasting? Um, let's find that and then remind those people of who they are and what can be done, what's possible. Right. Remember the, the 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 bars in front of us. Yes. Yes. If we could lift some of those bars so that more people they can self organize, and and generate movements to push against uh, crime and violence and uh, and intergenerational trauma. Right. Um, and um, and we developed at Starlight Runner techniques to get that job done, and it works. Wow. It works. Amazing. Um, you know you're on the right track. You know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's what we do. We, we, you know, we we work with uh, uh, governments, but also non-government organizations and corporations that are negatively impacted mm -hmm. by these societal woes, and um, uh, and and create transmedia narratives 
that filter into novellas and, and radio shows and um, uh, movies and music and advertising, all, you know, saying different pieces of this cultural mythology, reminding us. Um, and then we help them with little uh, products and services that help them understand how to use social media effectively, how to recognize, um, you know, false information and, and things like that. And, um, and it works. And let me tell you, AJ, that's dream come true. Yeah. That's something uh, uh, beyond my imagining that really does, you know, uh, have the potential to help people and um, and make lives better, and that's you know uh, that that's taking the practice in the fantasy world and putting it into uh, you know uh, into practice in reality. Absolutely, I thank you for that. And if you would like me to edit that out, I can. But I have to tell no, you. No, no, you, uh, no. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. I rarely talk about it because people don't usually you know research me that thoroughly. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I just want to say when the government calls, you know that you are on the right track. You are, uh, you've got an important role to play. And Jeff, you have changed the world. So I want to thank you so much from our hearts. Right, Paul? Just I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. It's great to see, uh, you know, somebody doing the work that you're doing and especially coming uh, from from your background, and I love what you said about story, story saving your life and, and bringing you out from the projects. Uh, you know, it's it's not where you start; it's where you end up. So, kudos and congratulations, and and well done. And uh, I can't wait to to read and see more of your stories on the big screen. Oh, they're 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 on the way. <laughs> well, anything we can do to help, of course, and I, anything sure. I can do to be involved. Uh, I would, I would love that. I mean, as um, an actor, yeah, yeah. Send me your links. <laughs> I will. And, and by <laughs> the way, can, that's what I tell. This. Yeah, that's what I tell people who are interested in in either working with me somehow or um, uh, getting involved in this type of work. Um, you, you know, don't go to the monkeys. Make the monkeys come to you. Uh, by <laughs> by, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 creating a presence for yourself online that is easy to check and, and so forth. Nobody looks at resumes anymore in, in the entertainment industry. They go send me his links and, and that's, you know, LinkedIn and a portfolio or, or some kind of accomplishment. And you, you, you guys know as well as I do, um, I, I'm going to look at their social media because mm -hmm. if, if they're a pain in the ass, you'll be able to see it right away in their social media. And, and, you know, I don't have time to, to, to work with people unless they're truly imaginative and are going to bring something uh, unique uh, uh, to the table. Um, uh, and, um, and so, uh, you know, uh, being able to establish a presence for yourself online is, is important to that effect. Wow, thank you so much. I love this. Um, you know, we're almost out of time, but I have one more question, if I may, and then we're going to do our heart messages, if that's all right. Um, and Paul, I'll, I'll send it over to you if you have another question. But I just real quick, you know how people um, name three things that, you know, that are necessities for you. Um, you know how they do those random kind of questions? Well, here's one here. Name three things, Jeff, that are absolutely must-haves for you in your life. Three things, ready, go. Three things that I must have in my life. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my family and my friends and a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Bravo. Well done. That's amazing. Uh, you, you're an incredible person and a wonderful guest. Um, over to you, Paul. Well, I was going to, you know what, I, I think not necessarily in that order, but I was going to say, you know, family and friends, of course, and, and my iPhone and I, maybe maybe a bathroom. Would be no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's all it's all I need. You know, uh, no, I. Yeah, yeah, and again, I don't know uh, in what order of importance, but uh, yeah, I like that a keyboard. But you know, I've got my keyboard on my 
sure. on my iPhone. But but <laughs> this iPhone, it's 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 probably the most important thing because everything happens on it. I mean, even the laptop. But, but we are the cyborgs, iPhone, family and friends. We are cyborgs, and we the, these are your portal into the universe. The, the totality of human knowledge accessible through this device, um, you know, so we need to respect that, you know, and we need to train young people how to use it, uh, you know, um, it, you remember the greatest American hero, he, he got his, his, his costume without the instruction book, and he kept smashing into walls. That's what happened when all of us got iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and and it's problematic. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm really hoping that we um, we can evolve our understanding of how to to tap into this information, so that we can uh, uh, you know be a little less anxious, and a little more productive. Again, it's it's a it's a tool. It's another tool. So there you go. That's it. There Wonderful. Go. Okay. And any other questions, Paul? You had for Jeff? Oh, uh, I've I have dozens of them so so uh maybe for, for part two or jeff if you'd be so inclined i'd love to invite you on my podcast which is paul vato presents uh oh, and we can even look at do that a, competition a, a, right here right <laughs> i'm uh, right in front of aj i'm trying to poach right you for my AJ. podcast Just because i love talking about ethnicity and culture clash and things like that and how, how somebody like you and myself can be into these japanese shows and things like that so but uh, no, th th this is fantastic. And I do, I, I probably would have a dozen more questions because you're so interesting yeah. and, and mostly thank you for being here and being so open with your knowledge and sharing it with, with the world. So thank you. Um, uh, your audience can uh, follow me on Twitter at Jeff underscore Gomez. Make sure that underscore is between Jeff and Gomez because the other Jeff Gomez, not happy with me, not happy. Um, and um, uh, I'll look up Jeff Gomez on LinkedIn, and um, if you're in the industry and uh, uh, you know link into me, that that'd be great. Amazing, amazing, and of course me. You can find it at paulvato.com. I may have lost my Twitter account. I've been I just recently got locked out of it, so uh, oh. I lost my Vato Cigars, which was my cigar company oh. uh, Twitter, maybe last year, and I was never able to recover it. So I don't know what's going on with Paul Vato, but uh, paulvato.com from there you can find my instagram and linkedin and facebook and all that good stuff uh so make sure you follow jeff underscore gomez on twitter and and of course uh aj i feel like we never ever say this but please like and follow our podcast <laughs> film talk with aj dean oh yeah and my cigars please if, you, mm -hmm. if you're looking for cigars vato cigars wow. <laughs> uh thank you uh and buy my book the kama sucia which is oh. a a dirty sex book so wow <laughs> uh you know what scratch that i i, I want to work with jeff so so maybe forget i said Gama uh, Sus, yeah. we all I have skeletons in our closet uh, <laughs> yeah um uh aj you um uh, are doing a wonderful service uh mm -hmm. to your audience um you. your uh your effusiveness and your intelligence and your ability to make your guests feel welcome and comfortable uh, uh, which enables us to talk about all kinds of things that I did not expect to talk about today. <laughs> um, uh, is uh, is it's really um, uh, thrilling. So um, uh, thank you, thank you for doing what you do, AJ. Oh my gosh, you have made my night. Thank you, Jeff. Coming from you, I uh, respect and admire you so much. You are a world changer and a and a leader for us and an inspiration for all of us. So I want everyone to follow Jeff Gomez and support him uh, in any way, shape or form uh, that you can. And also for my heart message, I wanted to say out there to all the people who sign, you know, all the people who sign, I wanted to say, um, we love the world. So we love the world. Oh, fantastic. And I'll over go. to you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was over here selfishly signing my own name. P. 
P-A-U-L. <laughs> like, my name is, that's all I know. So <laughs> right. the, 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 this used to be my, uh, w when you meet someone, they'll, they'll give you like a nickname. I think this is P. And so my nickname was this, and I know it looks vulgar, but I used to own an ice, my first business was a gourmet ice cream and coffee shop. And there was this beautiful little deaf kid. He was maybe three or four. So when he'd see me, he'd go, <laughs> because he was licking the pee, he was licking Paul or ice cream Paul. <laughs> ice cream. So uh, I've always kept that as eh, my nickname is Paul. And then you know, wow. I guess it works with cigars as well. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sorry to interrupt, Jeff. Please go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Over to you, Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Uh, everything just fell completely out of control. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Paul, for that. Over to you, Jeff. Um, well, just uh, have a great night, people. I'm I'm glad to uh, uh, to have been here. Wonderful, thank you. And Paul, any last words before I uh, before I? Yeah, yeah. I have to go use the most the third most important thing in my life right now. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> For me, that would be, um, I need Jeff? my bed, I need my bed, yep. I need my husband. Well, first of all, I need my husband, and then I need my bed, and then I need a salad. Wow. <laughs> no day. iPhone. No iPhone. No iPhone. Good for her. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot. <laughs> well, thank you. And until we meet again, thank you so much, Jeff. You've been an absolute pleasure, and we love you, and we hope you come back again. Much love and uh, hugs to you and everyone. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. And au revoir for now. Good night, guys.